The European Union has announced new investigations into Apple, Google and Meta. Brussels is looking into whether the companies are complying with the new Digital Markets Act, the DMA, which is meant to promote competition and give consumers more choice. It's only been since March the 7th that the thing came in, or fully, and the tech giants could face major fines if they're found to be out of line. The penalties go as high as 20% of global revenues for repeat offences. Scott Galloway is a professor at New York University. He joins me now from London. Which are the companies more frightened of? The DOJ, with its things like its case against Apple, or the EU, where they change the rules and the law and you have to comply? I think if it's a battle between who is uh, more unafraid or more inclined to take action, I think you'd say that the EU is probably kicking the snot out of the US right now. Keep in mind, Richard, we've had 20 congressional hearings looking at the issue of child safety and social media and have passed exactly zero laws. Uh, meanwhile, the EU has passed the Digital Marketing Act and is basically already is said they're ready to move on it. They're going very targeted after Apple and the App Store. And a lot of it just comes down to incentives. In the United States, um, we get a lot. We're net gainers from big tech, despite all the problems. In the EU, it's harder to make the case that they're net gainers. They get all the weaponization of their elections, the misinformation, the teen depression. But at the same time, there are very few hospital wings or university buildings named after Google or Facebook billionaires. So they get all of the downside with a fraction of the upside, which is sort of stiff in the backbone of EU regulators. So the EU seems to be taking a tougher stance than the US right now. The Thierry Breton, the Internal Markets Commissioner, who's largely responsible for the AI Act, which is just about to, to, to come into force, he says it's easier to change the rules and have them comply than litigate for 20 years than, and, and end up with a, a, a fudge. And he gave me the, he was the example you just talked about, which is the App Store, where, you know, the rules were changed and Apple has to open up the store. Yeah, I think that's right. I think the same is true here. If you think about, I mean, going back to the case of Dominion voting machines against News Corp, they got seven or eight hundred million dollars because News Corp was found guilty of purposely um, distributing or reporting on misinformation. Meanwhile, that was a dumpster fire compared to the nuclear mushroom cloud of misinformation on voting machines that went wild and rampant on social media, but they're protected by Section uh, 230. So without new laws, none of this goes anywhere in the United States. Right now, the only regulation on big tech is protection from any sort of liability that you're subject to, your network is subject to, or any newspaper. So absolutely, without new laws, this probably goes nowhere in the U.S. As we look forward, you, you, you may have just heard my discussion with, um, uh, with Joey on, on uh, Trump and the cases, but we are moving into a a moment which is incredibly difficult for regulation, for, the, um, for the, the, the companies themselves to police themselves, to monitor themselves, and you have external bad actors from, over, uh, from, uh, from, from foreign countries. How do you view the next few months in that sense? Well, I hope we show some leadership, uh, Richard. We have essentially what is a neural plant jacked into the to the wet matter of the majority of our youth under the age of 25, the frame through which young people see the world is now at a minimum influenced and or controlled by the CCP. And the notion that we're gonna raise a generation of civic business and nonprofit leaders in America that just feel worse and worse about America is if you believe that the CCP has a vested interest in diminishing our power, um, you know, they would never allow it, and they don't allow it. So we get the we get the opium version, they get the spinach version of TikTok. So I, I hope that we show some backbone here. Right, and on that question, I notice I'm here in the UK like yourself. The UK today issued a warning about new measures that would have to be taken against CCP in terms of all the, the way in which China is using cyber warfare to influence, for example, an election which will happen in this country in the next year. Look, it's going to be a miss. I mean, if you want to talk, we talk a lot about AI becoming sentient and super weapons. The short term real threat of AI, as you reference, is not even what I call deep fakes, but shallow fakes that perhaps present just incrementally, almost uh, unnoticeably, uh, President Biden, say, looking a little bit older or Vice President Harris coming across as a, 
a bit less articulate. I think you're going to see so much misinformation. And the problem is we have what I'd call amoral and porous management and platforms, respectively, that'll feel really bad about what happened after the inauguration. But right now, there's all that's gotten better is the technology. We have paleolithic instincts, medieval institutions, and godlike technology that can be weaponized by bad actors. So right. the first real externality is AI and misinformation around this election. Okay, so what would you like them to do? If I could, if, let me give you a wand now. Um, mm -hmm. Fairy Godfather Scott Galloway, what would you do with it? Well, I have the Halloween costume. Um, I'd remove Section 230. I'd age gate social media. I'd remove phones from kids under the age of 16. I would uh, create a mandatory pause on election health and uh, youth content up until the election. Wow. You thought that one through fully, and I'm grateful that you had. You and I need to talk more about these things. You're in London, I'm in London. I think that calls for us uh, to meet face-to-face. -face. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Scott Galloway.